Hi, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a rhythm strip that came from the intensive care unit at my hospital. This is a 38-year-old gentleman who is burnt pretty badly, and he has no underlying heart disease, and his baseline ECG is a normal sinus rhythm with a rate of about 90, with no significant underlying abnormalities. His echocardiogram was found to be normal. What the nurses noticed is that every now and then he would drop his sinus rate from the 80s to 90s down into the 50s and even 40s. The patient is intubated and sedated, and sometimes this would occur when the patient was being turned, but at other times it was just spontaneous. So they got a little nervous and they put the external pacemaker pads on the patient and had the defibrillator pacemaker unit next to the bedside. And the nurse noticed that his heart rate was starting to get a little slow. And this was a patient who was running rates of around 90 and now it's starting to slow down to about 60. So they decided to turn on the pacemaker. So here you see the pacemaker artifacts. This is from the external pacemaker. And you know, this causes the patient to jump a little bit in the bed. Luckily he was sedated, so he didn't feel it. But this rhythm strip was continuous and obtained while the pacemaker was on. And the question is, do you see anything wrong? Is there something that you should be concerned about if you were the person turning on this external pacemaker? So if you measure the distance between these pacemaker spikes, you can count it off 300, 150, 175, 60. And so the external pacemaker looks like it's operating at 60 beats per minute. Now, every now and then, you'll actually see that the pacemaker spikes slow down. And if you've watched my videos on pacemakers, you should realize that this right here, it's an intrinsic QRS complex that looks like it was appropriately sensed by the pacemaker because it delayed the subsequent pacemaker spike. Let's review how we analyze pacemaker strips. Because even though this is an external pacemaker, it does work in a similar fashion to a regular pacemaker. So we'll grab our calipers here and we'll place it on the pacemaker spike so we know what rate the pacemaker is set for. And as we move these calipers over, we can see that the spikes are roughly the same distance apart. But here's the trick, is to come down to the spike here that was delayed. And as you can see, if you measure back from that point, it seems as if the pacemaker appropriately sensed this QRS complex. Remember that pacemakers act like a clock. And every time there's a paced or sensed event, the clock starts. In this case, the clock is set for one second or 1000 milliseconds because the rate is operating at 60 beats per minute. So the device sensed this underlying QRS complex and it waited for one second. And since it didn't see a QRS by that point, it sends out a pacing spike, which in this case is a high energy electrical jolt applied to the patient's chest to try to get the heart to beat. And then we can see that there are a couple of other intrinsic QRS complexes and then more or less one second after that last QRS, you have pacing again. So is everything functioning appropriately? Are you happy with this pacemaker? Well, I'm not because there's something that's very important to notice. And that is that following some of these pacemaker spikes, there's actually an intrinsic QRS complex. Here's one here and here's one here. Now this is occurring almost immediately after the spike. What is this spike supposed to be doing? It's a high voltage jolt that's supposed to capture the heart. It's supposed to elicit a QRS complex. But how can you have an intrinsic QRS complex occurring immediately after this jolt? Well, it tells you that it's not capturing. That's right, I said it. This external pacemaker is jolting the chest and it's capturing the chest wall musculature, but it's not capturing the heart. It's not working. It's not doing the patient any good other than making them uncomfortable. And you need to be able to recognize this if you're gonna use external pacemakers. The patient, in fact, has an intrinsic sinus rhythm that's just a little bit slower than 60 beats per minute. But this external pacemaker is not capturing, it's not functioning properly. And you need to do one of two things, either turn it off, and it turns out that with this young patient, these periods of sinus bradycardia were all vagal and they were all self-limited. They always got better by themselves. But the other thing is, if the patient really needed external pacing, you need to increase the output. You need to crank that MA on the pacemaker up to the maximum. And then you can try to dial it down until you see the threshold or the lowest output that still captures. 
All right, so next time you're using these external pacemakers, make sure that it's capturing, because otherwise you're only doing harm to the patient. You're not really helping them. Well, I hope this was helpful. And until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.